All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. And my name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Mallorca in Spain, España, by Joseph uh, Schinwald. How are you doing, Joseph? I'm fine, thank you, John. A uh, pleasure to be on your show. Yeah. So I'll be in my work. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, and Joseph is um, Joseph is the uh, he's got a lot of experience from the media associate uh, publisher to vice president of multinational newspapers throughout Latin America to a professor of innovative business design at three universities. This journey and over 50 TV show appearances have given Joseph a rich understanding of the ever evolving media dynamics. And so what we're going to talk about today is uh, aligning the perfect host, guest, and audience for maximum impact. So every, every successful every successful podcast, Joseph, right, it, it hinges on this element of the right audience, right guest, right host. Uh, so tell me, lots, lots and lots of people are starting podcasts because it's become a thing now <laughs> where everybody wants to be on a podcast. So tell me. Um, what are some of the things, what are some of the best simple questions you should ask yourself before starting a podcast? Before starting a podcast with regard to aligning audiences? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I think just, it's, uh, with just figuring out exactly what you're going to do, where you go, you know, so because I feel a lot of people just dive into a podcast without really doing the, the doing the groundwork. Yes. Well, I can, I'm, I'm more like an expert in, in, in podcast. Uh, guesting or guest podcasting. Mm -hmm. So, but I know a lot because I do this seven years now. Also about starting a podcast. I have also my 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 hobby podcast on by the beach, which is a spirituality podcast. So basically, in the beginning, you want to have already what I know from my from 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 friends and from uh, other people who do have successful podcasts. You just have like ten interviews already set up, maybe even twenty. You launch your podcast like you launch a book. In other mm -hmm. words. When you launch it, you already have like one after the other because the algorithm works like this, that it puts you in the higher ranks when you have consistency. Consistency, mm -hmm. even in the beginning, particularly in the beginning, it shows like even when you launch a book on Amazon, you go right away into the bestseller list if you have right away 20, 30, 40 uh, reviews. If you don't, if you have the best book in the world, if you have the best podcast in the world and you're doing a podcast, let's say every three months, you will not rank yeah. in the searches. Mm -hmm. And if you have not such a great podcast, maybe, but you do it twice a week, you will be in the top ranks very yeah. fast. And that's what I know from my experience. But really, the, res the resonance, uh, that's what you wanted to also ask me later. Right? Yes. So not so much about podcasting, but podcast guesting, the resonance. I have a few nice case studies. Mm -hmm. So let's So let's get straight into that. So, okay, you got your podcast set up and you're ready to go. Um, how do you how do you figure out number one whether you're a good host and what kind of uh, what kind of guests you should be thinking of? The best hosts, the best podcasts, like yours, you're number one global rank. So you know, like you have number one, that means you are in the statistically um, your measurement says that you are like three thousand to seven thousand and even more listeners. If you get a number one, number 0 0.5 or even higher, that's the podcast I also target in my agency. But you have to basically, what I see uh, when I research podcasts is that they are actually interviewing many times other hosts of other very high level, high end podcasts. That is amazing, but it's true. I mean, they, you know, the, the networking is the, the fantastic thing after all, but you have to first get there, right? Mm -hmm. In order to get there, you can probably. I would suggest you get like on in networking, of course, but uh, you don't want to use podcast matching services because they are not that high quality. You get a lot of roll of the dice situations where you don't know uh, whether when you are a guest, whether even somebody listens to it. And when you are a host and you get experts that just started out, they're just young coaches or coaches who have never or, or whatever businesses who have never been on, a, on an interview, on a public interview. But if you are, let's say, go to LinkedIn and you're really choosing the experts which fit, resonate with your expertise, then you can absolutely 
get a very focused, niched podcast. And niching and targeting is the number one factor now in the future. Podcasting will change a lot in the future, but there's AI, of course. But mm -hmm. one thing is it becomes very much like edutainment, but very much also niche. So people know that you can reach a huge audience if you go to Joe Rogan, whatever. But yeah. You get, uh, if you go on a podcast tour, you get actually a better exposure with a better, higher return on investment. If you go actually really targeting, if you target the niche, the niche targeting is more and more important. And even if you build your brand, because within your industry, within your market, what, what happens is you will show up more and more as the go-to expert, as the authority on your subject. And it's nothing more frustrating to talk Let's say you have a nice conversation somewhere, not even in podcasting, but let's say you're meeting somewhere in Hawaii, you know, on an island and in a restaurant, and somebody says, you know, you say, I'm an expert philosopher, and you say, yeah, I'm interested, but then they don't understand. So it's a, it shows you clearly that you have to talk with the people who are interested in your topic, mm -hmm. right? There's a resonance. And the host and you, you have to have a resonance. For instance, <clears throat> I do podcast guesting. I'm a podcast casting expert of a podcast agency. Mm -hmm. I book high elite, uh, what elite experts on high end podcasts. And there is a resonance with your podcast because it gives you more sales. So it's totally related with sales. It's related with marketing. Mm -hmm. So there it's like almost like a, you know, a table of a, like a, a cocktail party. There you are at the right table. People are already discussing it, these topics, and you are coming in as the expert. That's the right. only way you can move the needle otherwise you will be really on in the wrong place yeah 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 so so tell me also about uh you know the the synergy between the host and the guest is obviously very 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 important uh so um matching the right guest to the right host because sometimes guests and hosts don't match fantastically right yes Yes, yes, of course. I mean, I have, I'm quite lucky. I mean, what I do is when I go on podcasts or when I research podcasts, I use uh, AI, AI tools, uh, ChatGDP, for instance, and you can give in the website of the host. You can give in your own website and you can ask questions, right? How do we resonate? You get a few points and that actually affects you immensely. You don't have to say, read it twice. You, you get it immediately. The host wrote that book, you wrote that other book, and you can talk about this. And even though the host likes skiing in Austria, well, that's already a great a synchronicity because I'm from Austria. So, you know, yes. these kind of things use AI for these kind of purposes, but ultimately always see it as a real um, conversation. Let's say we are now at the table in a restaurant or in, in a wherever, drinking mm -hmm. coffee in a cafe. And why, why are we talking, right? Why are we interested in each other? Somebody introduced us or You yeah. just got to know each other and then you listen and you uh, first get to know the other person. Of course, follow the same rules and then you can make your contributions in the, in the conversation. But otherwise, you know, when you talk only about yourself, then yeah. it's never good. No. And and that's why I, I'll be honest with you, Joseph. That's why I, li I like to do conversational podcasting. I don't I don't prepare questions for people. I don't. You know, when people send me questions, I don't really care for that. It's fine if that's what they want and they're more comfortable with that. But I feel like, I feel like it's it's the it's the the authentic conversation because I don't, to be honest, I'll be really honest with you. Often at the start of my podcast, I don't know where the conversation is going to go, but yeah. I'm excited to see where it's going to go. And yeah. those are the best, for my mind, those are the best podcasts. Yeah, we resonate completely on that one because I have been on podcasts many times and on television. This is my coffee machine, I'm so sorry. No, don't worry. So <laughs> the thing is that I I realize very much that when somebody says, and these are sometimes very good podcasts in the in the RS in the algorithm, there can be global one rank podcast. The host says these are my questions and they ask me to prepare. I, I don't like it. I like the free fall. The free fall you cannot hold on to anything. You know, anything which is happening around me But that's where the fear of public speaking comes in. But I overcame that a long time ago. And you only overcame come the, the fear of public speaking by doing it many times. First do it. And then you won't fear it anymore. Then it becomes a pleasure. It becomes joy and fun. And podcast guesting and podcasting, as you know, can be a lot of fun. But you don't want to be prepared so much. I had this experience with a 
very high level podcast and the host, she gave me like 10 questions and then she asked me those questions and I didn't even prepare it, but I remember the questions she asked, I had them already. So I was thinking, am I talking with myself? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking to myself. I, I like, I think it's, it's important to really right away catch the fascinating topic, mm -hmm. that which interests me when I interview somebody or when I get interviewed and then dig deeper. Just dig deeper yeah. in it and make it personal. As I said, you know, I, I look a lot at statistics and podcasting is immensely growing. I mean, we have mm -hmm. a 30% annual uh, compound growth rate of podcast, podcast industry. So in 2030, now it's a billion, it will be 160 billion. It's yeah. growing immensely. We have now in this, in this year, we already 500 million listeners worldwide of podcasts. Podcasts yeah. are not so many. The, mm -hmm. the number goes very high, three, 3 million to 5 million, but the active podcast like yours, active ones, which you can expect every week uh, 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 an episode, they're only 40,000 compared this to YouTube. Wow, Nothing yeah. like the huge potential in this. But, but what I wanted to talk uh, to say about this is that the broadcasting itself is a huge opportunity still. Yeah, yeah, and and you're right though, it, and and it should be fun and it should be enjoyable. I mean, you you've done a lot in media, obviously, in the past, and I think um, sometimes people still think that it's all it's all like that. I mean, I've done. I've done live TV. Um, I mean, one time in Australia, to, you know, kind of come in at the last moment uh, to the studios, and they suddenly say you're on. They sit you in the seat, and the guy picks up a piece of paper, and he has no clue who you are, and he reads a couple of things off the thing, and suddenly you're on live TV, and you're having a conversation that you just have to kind of react and go with the flow with. And I think. Um, with podcasting, you know, it's the same, but it's in a much more kind of, in many ways, a safer environment for people, and it's much easier. So I, I think, I think if you've had any background in media, it it definitely helps because you're more relaxed. But I don't think that should be anything that uh, people shouldn't fear podcasting or get you know, nervous about it. They, it's like everything else; it takes practice. Yes, John. Yes, absolutely. And you know, to say something valuable, maybe hopefully to your audience. Is it because we talk about resonance mm -hmm. of the host and the guests. So how do you find out on which podcast you should be? So the first thing is always really, that's what I do in my research for my clients and for myself. The first thing is always to look at yourself. What kind of expert am I? What is my positioning, my own positioning? And then you can find other, and you can do it on LinkedIn, you can do it just think about it from the books you read or whatever, but you can also do it very much with AI now. So I, I do this, you know, I go in and say, and I get this perfect pitch of the person of my of myself and I ask for, right away, what are 30 similar experts, similar experts. Now, when you go afterwards to the biggest podcast, podcast engine, search engine, which is listen notes, listen notes dot com. Mm. You go there because it's very focused. Yep. And you say in parentheses, you put that expert in one of those 30 experts which are similar to you and then you find with the, the, the 20 30 podcasts that person has been on and you can do this with 30 30 experts right so you actually can find really good podcasts where similar experts have been on they've been at the table of discussion bringing their unique value to it and now you can do that also because you have a unique standpoint who cares what and you don't care about the expert the other competitor mm -hmm. may be said because you will say things totally different in a different way yeah and you know when you're when you're a host you will be interested in several people in your in your industry talking about the same topic but not but in a different way so yeah. that's a great way to know that you have a resonance because you can also listen to the episode and funny you know i studied all this a long time and uh, uh, competitive research is big, you know. Yeah. But nowadays, you just go in there and your biggest competitors come up in an interview. You, you can listen to them. You learn so much, you know. <laughs> and then you can be on the same podcast. <laughs> Yeah. And I think reason. I think and part of it, too, Joseph, as you as you referenced earlier, it's sometimes people who have no, uh, you know, they have no real following. They have no real expert. I mean, they have expertise, but they haven't built anything up yet, and they want to be on the biggest podcast, right? They want to be on the big name. Oh podcast. yeah, I know that topic. Yes. And so, um, and and obviously, just like what you said, is that's not always the best thing for somebody. I mean, if it's great if you can, but it's much better to be on the right podcast rather than just to, to always want to be on the big ones. I mean, I know podcast booking agencies have this, have this problem all the time. We're trying to manage expectations. Yes. So true. So true, John. Now, but you know, there's the other thing. I mean, 
we don't want to, you know, we, we want to be close to what reality is all about. I mean, I remember when I was young, I liked to go to discos, right? So I asked that, uh, that guy at the door, doorman, <laughs> how do you get this beautiful women, you know? So he said, well, I always started the top. But that was for me very important to know because he said, when you start at the bottom, you might end up only at the bottom. You stay there. Let's yeah. say you have like the people say with the women, and I, you know, I'm not like this anymore. I'm old, <laughs> but as as a yeah. when I was young, they have like a rating from one to ten. Right, a ten, a ten woman is very top level. But you will start at two, then you stay at two. You might get married with her. Right, that was his philosophy. That was I learned from it. But in the podcast, uh, podcast pitching. In the podcast selection, you do the same basically. Really, I think it's very important to start at the top. I mean, it might be kind of counterproductive the whole thing, but I also, when I was in Buenos Aires and I was, you know, uh, in the, I invited fifty times for the first time, I was invited to television. I was right away in a very, very uh, important, popular television, and I was like not seeing anymore myself. I saw myself from above. Uh, then I didn't see myself anymore because. The sofa mm. was, that the chair was empty. I was so nervous. Yeah. <laughs> Three cameras on me, right? But you know what? The second time, the third time, I was like easy going. It was fun. Mm. I was so confident. But now, the same thing with podcast casting. If you are a real expert, if you're not an expert, you shouldn't even go on podcast. Yeah. On podcast. You know? But if you're really and you have confidence on your own expertise, yeah. that means you can talk. Any question is welcome. You can talk about it. You can bring it back to your own. You can bring a compelling story. You can yeah. you have a deep expertise, right? And you are entertaining because that is one of the tendencies mm -hmm. in podcasting. More and more young people listen to it. They want to also yeah. be entertained. So yeah. it's edutainment. It's edutainment. And yeah. if you do that, you can start on the top. You can go right away. I have clients. They just wrote a book. They've never been on camera. I say to them, we have to have a video because of you. Mm -hmm. because the podcast host wants to listen to you first before they accept you. So it's the positioning. You have to know something about positioning in the yeah. email pitch because there are lots of pitches and you have to do this personalized and you have to do it really well. And then I, I position them. But of course, what helps when my email goes out from my company to the right host, they say, okay, there's an email from Joseph. He always has great guests. This will be a good one. But I always start at the top. And, you know, I get them right away. Great right. Uh, podcasts. And I think there's nothing wrong with it because then they stay at that level. Because yeah. the next time I pitch them, I can already mention those podcasts in the email template, in the email pitch, and they will stay up there. But if, it's, if you go low, yeah. then what happens is you get like sometimes what I learned from from average podcasts, like in the podcast matching industry, mat matching services, and they mm -hmm. can be good, but... Uh, yeah. You know, it's like you don't, you don't get a, a, a host which asks poignant questions. Yeah. So the whole one, is, yeah, is based on, you know? yeah. So one other thing, Joseph, is I mean, you mentioned about being en entertaining and all of that kind of thing. Uh, how do you, how do you help people who maybe are not naturally very funny or entertaining, or they're not, not you know, how do you help them um, prepare themselves so they can maybe they're very technically they know their stuff, but they're not yeah. very engaging. How do you help them with that? Well, it's like it's an ex it's a spectrum, right? I mean, it's not great if you're the the funniest person in the world. Not necessarily, you know, but you don't want to be the most technical person either. So it's like, I think you have to uh, be in the middle and uh, just make it interesting, fascinating. You're talking about your expertise. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, I think I think that's the other thing, too, is I think authenticity is what connects people. And so you really need to be uh, you really need to bring out that authentic. And I think sometimes, Absolutely. like I said, Sometimes when people get in, uh, in front of a camera or something like that, they start to go, oh, I need to be somebody else. Yeah, that's so true, you know. Just, you know, what? where humor comes from, humor is a natural ingredient of us. We have humor when we are honest. But, you know, you don't have to be honest. Like, you don't have to tell everything. Yeah. Like, when you talk about where you come from, what is your story, you, you take the best of your life and you are totally honest about it. And that's coming out really well all the time. It's authentic. People mis mis confuse it sometimes. Now I have to tell everything, all the dirty little secrets, because I have to be honest. No, that's not true. You just don't say it. <laughs> but you're still honest, totally honest, you know, when you present yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And and I just think it, it, it is fascinating because, like you said, you don't have to tell everything. But they, the other thing as well is, like, um, most of the cultures of the world, like, have storytelling traditions. Like, we're really a storytelling race and, and um, or species. 
And therefore, when you tell stories, you tend to connect with people even better. It's so important, you know, what sells nowadays and the big authors of books, you know, you know, management books, sales mm -hmm. books, the, yeah. new, the new ones. Now, I don't want to even uh, name anybody, but what is over and over, what I see over and over again is what sells now is not just products. It's not, it's not like informal is what yeah. sells is the story. The brand yeah. is a story and the yeah. storytelling has become so important because it's such a, uh, it, it's like the branding has many patterns. There are new patterns of branding, new ones. And there are new, new patterns of profitability all the time. But the brandings, the branding pattern is to cut through the noise. I mean, yeah. where are we living right now? You go on the cell phone, you have all this social media. That's what I want to say also, you know, it's really hard to print all the time, post everything, or post something all the time. But when this video comes out and you allow me that I can grab that link sure. somewhere, I can put it in an AI uh, uh, machine, you know, AI, just everybody's mm -hmm. like $30 a month like opus dot uh what is it, ai whatever or there are others it's just you know services i use that one and you will get from one video uh from one interview uh 20 clips what you can and the ai will, will search it and will get the most important yep. I somehow it, it knows it the most important 30 30 seconds of that now you have for social media great clips also so you don't have to always think about uh, what should I post? Because the people on social media, they like the 30 second stuff. Yeah. And it's it's just our attention thing. Like, you know, the, the, we are we're saying, oh, a new episode came out and that episode is somewhere in, in 15, 20 platforms, broadcasting platforms, but the people on LinkedIn, the people on, uh, on, on Twitter, whatever, they are not even subscribed to any podcast. They've never listened to a podcast. And sometimes they see you all the time. They might not even listen and see what and listen what you say, but they, they might not even look at the video. But you know what? They see you all the time on different shows, podcast shows. You know what yeah. the what the what the what the effect is, right? Yeah. You're the go to expert. You're the authority. How can it come? And that comes from the from the past. The the newspapers they only interviewed people who were experts. Then mm -hmm. the television only the radio they only invited people who were real real experts. But with the broadcasting, there's this myth now and the reality. The myth is that you, when you are so many times seen, but on social media, that you've been that you're on different podcasts in your niche and you talk about always about the same topic but different in different ways. Yeah. They just see that they just see that from time to time, and then the myth will be that you are the expert. And if you have written a book that helps you immensely, I mean, for influencers that helps you immensely. The reality is that somebody has pitched you to the shows. That is our our time right now. I mean, it's it's just yeah. you have to take advantage of it. In former days, you would have had to be a university professor in three universities, yep. then yep. they will invite you. You know, now you say I am. You yeah. put it in the pitch. You have written this book, and you can go on thirty podcasts, or you can have this uh, new uh, business startup business, and it's a very unique idea startup idea, and you have actually time forty five minutes to talk about it, and that's thirty times a year. I mean, yeah. this is amazing, right? PR. Oh, I mean, yeah, no, no. the the re the reach and scalability of this is is absolutely incredible. So, well, listen, uh, Joseph, this has been fantastic. I like all of Joseph's information to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. Oh, thank you very much. Well, I have actually a free ebook, and the ebook is about how to pitch yourself to high end podcasts. Yeah, I have a formula for it. It's a very easy formula, very methodology is very easy. I mentioned it already. So what I do is I give this away for free. But if, okay. if somebody, let's say, have more money than time, not that I say I'm, my service is expensive, my service is just, it's a premium service, but I, I actually book experts on high-end podcasts. So let's say if you have written a book and you want to be getting the message out, you can come to me, you can, we can have a discovery call, and then I will get you, I will research and I make the positioning and the pitch for you and you can appear within a month on, let's say, four top level podcasts. That means top level for me means a great host, great audience, ho uh, podcast where there are other great guests and you get 10 plus, 10, uh, 1,000 plus audience, sometimes 10,000 audience, but I will say it starts from 10, from 1,000 from, from 1, plus. Mm -hmm. a, a one star uh, podcast is 5,000 plus usually, right? So I would say I mostly get my, my clients on, on, on 1%, even higher. Some clients want only 0.5%. Uh, 
So that's what I do. I actually have this uh, website, which is called guestexpertsonair.com. There we can have a discovery call, and that's where I help you get on the podcasts in your niche and with a big audience where you can talk about your company. Maybe first we strategize, we are going to get the marketing goals you want to achieve. And if you want to know more about this and want to do it yourself, maybe if you have more time than money can also be right. So then you can do it yourself and it's not a big deal. You do three hours a day and you get one great podcast for yourself every month. It's 12 podcasts a year. You, you appear like almost 100,000, I mean, 50,000 people, right? So yeah. you go to guestexpertsonair.com forward slash podcast promo. Yeah. Promo Thank means you. promotion. I say it in, a, in an English pronunciation. See, what? <laughs> no, podcast promo. <laughs> podcast promo yeah excellent well listen thank you so much again joseph and thank you so much for um spending the time with us as your island hopping and jumping around the world <laughs> yes indeed yeah. i am still a, I, like, I like to still uh yeah no, after it's COVID, particularly after COVID. yeah for sure absolutely well listen thanks again joseph thank you for watching listening and i'll see you all again very soon thank you thank you john it was a pleasure thank you very much yeah.